Well, I have another project. Unfortunately, Canada Post broke the box. So I had to open it to make sure that everything that was sent to me survived. Today, I'm going to go over a project that I wanted to do. I didn't even know it was going to exist until I phoned Tom at Landshack and said, Hey, is there such thing as, you know, a cable that carries power and fiber all at the same time? Because I got a couple comments and videos that I have and a couple emails saying, you know, I want to run, I want to run cameras or I want to run some access points on my property, but I don't want to run 110 volts or 220, depending on where they were to a pole just to have like maybe one or two cameras. So I thought to myself, well, technically you could tape a piece of fiber to a piece of um, DC power wire and do it that way, but that's kind of messy. This right here is a solution. Now, before I go too far, the whole purpose of this video is to show you guys, yes, there's such a cable, but you don't have to go out and buy a fusion splicer if you were just like a small business that wants to run cameras to a pole or you're a, you own a big farm and you have a piece of property that has a space where you want to put cameras or maybe an access point or something that requires network but power, PoE. Um, this project that I'm going to do here is going to show you guys, well, technically right now I'm just going to show you what I got for the project, but the next video will be me working with this and this, that it's possible to put a camera or maybe a access point on a pole somewhere, I'm going to put it in my backyard for you guys, and have it function. But also that you don't have to go out and buy a fusion splicer or some specialty tools to do this. You need a couple things, which is included in this bag, and I'll put a link to that. Thank you very much, Tom, for sending me this. And thanks for the new shirt that he sent me. Shirts, I should say. Shirts. Um, I went out and bought as I started gathering ideas for this, as Tom was packaging some stuff up to me to send me because he sponsored me some cable, I went out and bought a case from um, Polycase. It cost me $180. It's a DIN rail case. So inside, it's a waterproof case that you can put some, um, I can't remember what these things are called, cable clamps or something like that. There's a special name. I'll put it in the video. I'm, with some DIN rail in this case, that will hold these two products. I'll go over that in a minute. And then put some ends on a fiber cable using these tools, but you'll need one of these. So the case will hold in this situation. I have another one coming, different Ken case. The case will hold an access point on my post, maybe a camera too, and a switch, which is going to be powered through this cable but the network connection is going to go through that cable too at one gig. There's 10 gig versions, but for this project, I didn't need a 10 gig switch to go for cameras. That's, that's a lot of bandwidth. That's all going to go in this case and it's going to be perfect. Now I got some ends because I asked Tom, I said, I really want to show people that you don't need to go out and buy a whole pile of expensive equipment just to do maybe one run or maybe a couple runs. So Tom, thank you very much, sponsored me some mechanical ends. Now, some people might say, oh, you got a fusion splice because it's the future. If you're doing a one gig connection and not that really far of a distance, this will work just fine. Just do it properly and make sure that you test it properly and it should work just fine. I have a cable outside right now. It's been outside in the weather for two years with mechanicals, some really cheap Amazon ones, and it's been working just fine. So if you buy proper ones and cleave it properly, you'll have success. So in this case, like I showed, we have a piece of DIN rail that I have to cut to fit in here properly because there's some screws. This is going to go on the fence. We have our mechanical ends. He sent me others for some other cables that I have. So I got multi-mode and single mode. This is multi-mode cable, so we won't use one of these. Okay. Shirts, I'm going to put down here for now so I can show you guys stuff. He was nice enough to also send, just in case I needed it, maybe the switch that he sent me, which is in one of these boxes, didn't work with one of the modules. So he sent me a um, SFP module to try in there, and I'm going to try my other ones that I have, just in case. So that's going to go in there. I'll put a link to all this stuff in the video so you guys have it. Don't worry. And going further here, I went out and bought some other stuff. So I bought some more of those. The name has slipped me pieces so we can put our cable through and have a water tight seal for the fiber cable 
and the other Cat6 cable that's going to go to the other device that's going to be strapped to this. So we have that. Yes, I bought myself a fiber case so when I strip wire I could put it in there and dispose of it. I also bought these nice mechanical or stainless steel uh, keystone pieces that snap into a DIN rail. So that way when I put my wire with fiber in there and it's terminated, I can use a little keystone into this and then run a patch cable from this to the switch that's going in here. I think it was like five bucks for two or one of these. So I bought two just in case. And then I got a keystone in there that will allow me to move cables around and not have to disturb the cable once it's set in the box. So I have that, two of those. I have my own VFL because in this kit that you can buy from Tom for, I think it's $2.99 to do all of this stuff isn't included, but it's on Tom's website, I'm pretty sure. And if it's not there, just send him an email. He probably has them there. Maybe just didn't have a chance to put them on there. But also, if you have a project like what I have, what's going on here, phone Tom or email him and say, hey, I have a project, I have an idea, can you help me? He'll call you back and you can go over it and he'll hook you up with all the stuff and give you some advice on how to do your project. And if he doesn't, he has the resources to get that stuff for you. This in here is the power supply. So let's have a quick look. It's nothing special, but what it allows us to do is run 110 volts to this and then you can connect this, I'll unravel it in a minute, to your distance. Now. I think you can go up to a thousand or four thousand. I'll put a correction there. Feet of our meters of cable for fiber at one gig. You can have a pretty good distance for doing that. And at home, pretty fine. So Tom sent me over a uh, 60 watt power supply, 48 volts. I think it's actually more than 48. It's actually uh, 44 to 57 because you will have voltage loss or drop across cable the more distance you go. So you want to have this at the highest voltage if you have a long, um, a long run, because then you have at the very other end, you have the minimum spec for the voltage at the other end for the switch. So we have that. It's a DIN rail one. It'll snap into the DIN rail into the other box, not this one. Okay. Thank you, Tom, again. Then he sent me a switch, which is powered from this over distance. We got a, oh, it's taped pretty good. I'll open it because we're going to be using it soon. A little four port gigabit switch that has two SFP modules in there. So our fiber will go into this and then our camera or the access point, whatever I want, will plug into this. And this just clips on into a rail inside of this box and it's protected. Powered at the top by these things. And it's not even screwed in, so I can take them out. So you can screw your cable into this, plug them into here, and you're set to go. Pretty simple. I've used these before. They work great. Not expensive. You can get multiple versions of it, four, eight, I think up to 16, but that's a lot of ports for a little box here. So depending on what you want, they're available on Tom's site. I tested one of my cable, I'm going to call it a bung, but that's not the right term, just for term for now, to make sure that I got the right one when I was out shopping. So this will go into the bottom of this where the cable will come in. Now, I don't know how that got on my desk. The hard thing about fiber is terminating, but it's actually not that hard when you do mechanical. The only thing I'm scared of, because I've never done this before, is this fiber that comes in this is got a steel um shielding on it that should come off it's like a micro armor so i'm gonna have to call tom and say hey how do i get this apart and i'll put that in video number two safely how do you get that going to so we can terminate it it's gonna all be on the next video this cable as we can see has our fiber there's two of them in there it's protected plus it's double protected by some other pieces and it's got our pull string if we ever need to pull it but what the main thing i like about this is it's got our power wire, 12 gauge, sorry, it's even thicker. 12 gauge wire, so when you go for the higher distance, this little um, voltage drop, this is gonna take our voltage from our power supply and feed it into our switch at a distance. Now, Tom only sent me 30 feet, because that's all I needed, thank you very much. And this should get us a quick little video of how to run it, 
terminate it and work for it. So those guys that want to use this stuff can buy it from Tom and use this for polls for doing their projects. Now, so you guys know, this kit that Tom sent me to show you guys that you don't need a special set of tools for fiber, you just need the basics to get it working, is including a whole bunch of other pieces. Now, comes with a nice handy bag. Not sure if everything's gonna stay in the bag, but basically everything is in here. We have some wipes for when we'd use our alcohol, and there's a little bottle in here. Oh, it's even got alcohol in there. Oh, it's spilled open. I'll have to uh, not open that right now because I guess Canada Post, when they jarred my case, did that. So I'm gonna have to wash that now and put new alcohol in there, but that's fine. It's easy, alcohol's cheap. In the kit, we have all the pieces. So we have our cleaver, I'll open that and show you. Our, what do they call this? Slit and ring fiber optic jacket stripper. So you'll use this to go on this piece right here to go around it like you do on Cat6 cable to break the shield and pull it off. So that's included. We have scissors to cut fiber and to cut the um, fiberglass weaving material that's in there. I think it's like, a, it's like a pull string, but it's very, it'll dull normal scissors really quick. So we just included those with this kit. And my favorite, wire strippers. So for $299, you practically have everything to get yourself going with a nice cleaver. Let's have a look. Comes in a nice carrying case, so that way you can put it back in there, keep it nice and clean, because you definitely want to keep them clean. So we have a nice, actually I'm not even take it out, because you can probably keep it in there. A nice cleaver keys in there. We got our, yep, blades locked. We have our little flap, so we can put our wire in there, or our fiber. And uh, pretty sweet, that's nice, I like that. For the price, what you're going to get, for if you only use this one or two times, or maybe a hundred times, I think these are rated up to 2,000 cleaves before you have to spin the wheel, so you got lots of time to keep going. This will all get us a perfect setup connected to this, and I'm going to walk you guys all through that. And I'm going to say thank you very much to Tom for sponsoring some of this stuff for me to show you guys, and I'll put links to all this stuff in the video. But this goes to show you that you really don't need to spend thousands of dollars or maybe potentially hire somebody if you're pretty savvy with cables and wiring and stuff like that to do this yourself. Maybe you only need to do this one or two times on your farm or somewhere. You don't need to go out and, you know, spend a lot of money. You can do it yourself. So I'm going to prove that to you in video number two. And uh, this should be fun. I'm just going to have to get another case for the power supply and uh, go from there. It's pretty easy to do. Maybe I'll make some mistakes. Maybe I won't. Who knows? But that's why I'm going to show this to you so you guys can do it too. So for now, let's uh, pack all this stuff up. I will uh, start working on video number two when I'm back from vacation in a week and then take you guys through that. So if you have any questions, let me know. Maybe let Tom know. I'll put all the information in the description below. Remember, look below for the description because there's information down below. People always ask me emails, what about this, this, and this? And I have to reply to them and say, stuff's in below. So. You guys have a great day. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. And uh, I'm going on vacation now. Bye. <laughs>